Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Brian Baptist Church uh, for this, our Sunday night service. And uh, continuing a wonderful day uh, with uh, Brother Addison Smith, his wife Kendra, and the family. And uh, just so glad that you're back here tonight. We're going to start by singing tonight. And uh, Mark is going to come up. He's going to lead us in a song. Go ahead, Mark. All right. Welcome, everybody. Go ahead and turn in your songbooks to page number 443. Sunshine in the soul. Go ahead and stand with me if you would, please. There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than glows in any earthly skies. For Jesus is the light. Shine, blessed sun, shine when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today, a carol to the King. And Jesus listening can hear. The songs I cannot sing. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in the soul. There is springtime in my soul today. For when the Lord is near, the dove of peace sings in my heart, the flowers of grace appear. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll, when Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in the soul. There is gladness in my soul today, and hope and praise and love for blessings which he gives me now, for joys laid up above. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sun. Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in the soul. Amen, and they just keep rolling through. I think we should sing another song. I think about 10 more people will come in if we keep singing. No, okay. just kidding. Uh, glad that you're here, glad that you made it, and uh, making good to see you with your friend. And, and you don't know me from Adam, but uh, I think 90% of the congregation has seen pictures of you when you're in Guam or something like that, or in China or something. So anyway, uh, glad that you're here with us tonight. Um, uh, prayer, request, uh, prayer request for Emily's oldest brother. Um, um, uh, Bill um, has been lifelighted to St. Anthony's Hospital. It appears to be a appendicitis attack. And so just anyway, be in prayer for him and uh, just that the Lord will help in that. Uh, first of all, let me say this to uh, Brother Addison Smith and your wife Kendra and the whole family. Uh, I have greetings for you. First greetings are from uh, Pastor uh, Tony Newhouse and his wife Karen that say hello to you both and say, I love that little family, he says. And, uh, and then also from Susanna Sierra Matero also sends greetings from uh, Tabernacle Baptist Church in Concord, California. So I just wanted to let you know about those greetings. And uh, we're going to begin with a word of prayer. Let me first thank the congregation for a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for your care and concern uh, for Togo, Africa. Thank you for being generous in your offerings. I see some offerings have continued to come in today. Some of that might be for Togo as well. But I just want to thank you for caring 
uh, for the people of that country. And uh, I will be in uh, touch uh, with Brother Patala over there, kind of let him know uh, what is happening, what action we are taking on that. And then um, if there's anybody who has not uh, signed uh, the card to Dottie Miller, who will be moving to College Place on Wednesday, let me know. Um, I'm not sure where those cards are now. Do you? Anna has them. Oh, Anna has them. Okay, Anna has become the custodian of the card. And uh, if you want to see the card, you will have to pay rent. And No, just kidding on that. And so anyway, uh, we're going to have a wonderful night tonight. And so we're going to begin with a word of prayer. Ask God's blessing on the service. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for what a wonderful day it has been uh, already. Uh, we thank you for the morning services, the adults, the teens, the children uh, that have already been here today. And we thank you that we can fellowship together, the wonderful fellowship of the saints, and share a burden together tonight for the city of Grants Pass, Oregon. Pray that you would help uh, Brother Smith as he shares uh, his burden and the burden of his family uh, with us this night. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So you may be seated, but I suggest you have your songbook handy. All right, turn to page 297. 297, nothing is impossible. We'll sing this through twice. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His Word. Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Oh, put your trust in God alone and rest upon his word for everything oh everything yes everything is possible with god nothing is impossible when you put your trust in god nothing is impossible when you're trusting in his word Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone and rest upon his word. For everything, oh everything, yes everything is possible with God. Amen. Turn and to page number 388, 388. Okay, not one we've sung a whole lot, so pay attention, all right? Jesus is my Savior, I shall not be moved. In his love and favor, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like the tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. In my Christ abiding, I shall not be moved. In his love I'm hiding, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. If I trust him ever, I will shall not be moved. He shall fail me never. I shall not be moved. Just like the tree that is planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. 
I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. On his word I'm feeding, I shall not be moved. He's the one that's leading, I shall not be moved. Just like the tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Okay, very good. Let me make mention of just a few things here. Sunday school teachers, I do have uh, your Sunday school resource CDs up here. And so if you need those, uh, come pick those up um, after service. Just want to get that to you. And um, then make mention just a, a few other things here. Um, again, uh, Brother Addison Smith is going to be presenting his ministry and burden uh, for a new church in Grants Pass, Oregon tonight. There will be a point in him presenting his ministry uh, that there will be a question answer time. Um, uh, simple rules of uh, question answer time are this, and I have to say this, because in our modern age, if you ever were to watch a press conference with the President of the United States, uh, the journalist gets up to ask a question but gives seven minutes of his own opinions before he gives a three-second question. And so we don't do that here, actually. So, so what it is, uh, to help move things on, uh, if you're given the microphone to ask a question, ask a question question. So anyway, just helping you there. Uh, simple and helpful guidance. Uh, let me again talk about we do have masks provided if for some reason you need one. And you know what's amazing about that? I feel kind of disheartened by this uh, because if I put on a mask, then I just look like a guy with a mask. If, if Mick puts on a mask, he looks like a cowboy. It, it means something. For me, I just look like a guy uh, with a mask. But anyway, just uh, letting you know that, uh, just be aware of social uh, distancing policies and pray for our county. Uh, pray uh, that the virus rate will go down and, uh, and just uh, pray for, for good health uh, among our people uh, to the best of our ability. And uh, again, I wanna, I wanna thank you, the congregation, again, for all your hard work during the I Love America conference this week. Uh, that doesn't happen by accident. It takes a huge amount of hard work. But one thing that none of us ourselves individually can manufacture is a spirit um, in the service. And, and there have been several comp comments uh, regarding um, some of you that attended and pastors alike, just an amazing, amazing spirit. And that's something only the Holy Spirit of God can do. And so when that happens, you thank God. And we need to thank God uh, for what he's doing in those things. And then just pray uh, as we continue to look ahead uh, for next year. So uh, remember that um, again on the calendar. Um, uh, men, we will still be having our Saturday men's coffee this Saturday at 8.30, uh, just making mention of that. Again, remember our Wednesday schedule. Uh, we start at 7 here. Live stream starts at 7.30. Uh, some of you um, missed the combined adult teen hour, and you may have missed it because either you were a Sunday school teacher or something happened that kept you away uh, during that hour, and I had some asking me about it. That uh, that particular session has been, um, it has been recorded and it has been posted about 4.30 afternoon. Uh, that was posted on a Facebook, on our Facebook page. So letting you know that so you can view it, so you can share it with your friends. And see, here's what I tell you. Here comes the cowboy right now. There he is right there. And see, if he puts on a mask, I told you, he looks like a cowboy. See, I just look like a guy with a mask. And so uh, anyway, um, uh, just uh, remember those things, and remember it's nice to share. Um, one of the amazing things that happens is our, the views um, on our Facebook page skyrocket when somebody just simply hits the share button. It's amazing, and, um, 
And Mrs. Watkins, I'm, I'm happy to tell you, at the moment, you are the most liked person in church today. Uh, her Sunday school lesson, it posted at 10 o'clock, and there's likes galore, and he even loves, okay? Now, I'm going to really scrutinize the love list here, but uh, anyway, and so anyway, just uh, letting you know that, and uh, anyway, just, but just encourage you, if, if you miss something, go ahead and, and just uh, catch that online. It's important, and one of the reasons why we're having um, an extra Sunday school lesson is because of the current state that we're in, uh, some of our children that normally come on the shuttle to church aren't making it. And, uh, and uh, you know, um, uh, parents, they're, they're very protective. Sometimes they're protective of their children. Uh, sometimes they're protective of themselves. And so we want to make sure that we provide something for them. And so we indeed uh, are doing that. Uh, Brother Smith, before I forget, I want to give this to you. This is called a belated Father's Day. And... Uh, uh, you cannot eat that during the service. Um, but anyway, I wanted to make sure that, uh, that you got that. And, um, and so just making mention here, just looking at a few things here, again, in a week and a half, there will be a men's uh, breakfast and meeting as we get ready for our quarterly business meeting, which this year is turning out to be like our, our six-month business meeting. Nothing. <laughs> Uh, has gone normal this year, and so uh, anyway, just uh, making mention of uh, those things uh, that are happening. So just trying to catch you up on that. Uh, again, uh, excitement, excitement. Oh, yes, thank you, Brother Carl. Is there anybody here present tonight, and you did not get a baby bottle, and this baby bottle is for our uh, uh, pregnancy care services, um, it's Change for Life, uh, and it's a fundraiser for our pregnancy center here in town. By the way, what a wonderful job they do. Uh, right here, uh, Chantel would like one right there. And uh, they do a wonderful job. We collect change, and it helps uh, finance their operation. They have saved lives because they've helped make a difference between a mother who has been horrific, mother to be horrifically deceived in, in, in killing their baby to, I want to keep my baby, I want to save my baby. Life is precious, precious, precious in the sight of God. And so uh, if you fill one up and say, I'd like another, uh, we'll give you another. There's not a problem with that. And that will be going on for several weeks. So just uh, letting you know about those things that are happening. And so um, at this time, um, we're going to have one more song. And then after that song, uh, Brother Smith, we're going to be ready, and you're going to be in the hot seat. We're going to bullet questions towards you, and uh, actually, you're going to have, we're going to have a great time. Go ahead, Mark. All right, 439, stepping in the light. Go ahead and stand with me, if you would, please. Stand and sing together. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, trying to follow our Savior and King, shaping our lives by His blessed example. Happy, how happy the songs that we bring. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light. Stepping in the light, how beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Pressing more closely to Him who is leading, when we are tempted to turn from the way. Trusting the arm that is strong to defend us, happy, how happy our praises each day. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Walking in footsteps of gentle forbearance, footsteps of faithfulness, mercy, and love, looking to Him for the grace. Really, Paul. 
promised happy, how happy our journey above. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, upward, still upward, we'll follow our guide. When we shall see him, the king in beauty, happy, how happy, our place at his side. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light, how beautiful the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Amen. At this time, you may be seated and just kind of give you a format of what's happening tonight. Uh, Brother Smith is going to be up in a moment. And uh, one thing that's important is uh, having a burden for the lost. But um, uh, Brother Smith's going to share his testimony, how he became saved. And I'm looking forward uh, to hearing that. And, and then... Uh, he's going to sing. He's a preacher who sings. He's a singing preacher, and, uh, and he will be doing that. And uh, then after that, we have a, a, uh, a video, a multimedia presentation, and they'll be presenting his ministry. And so, uh, Brother Smith, we've had a wonderful time. And um, I, I'm, I'm kind of sorry you, um, you live so far away, because now I know when I have to get out of town, I know who I would call for pulpit supply, and now you're you're seven hours away, so, uh, but anyway, uh, we've uh, greatly appreciated the preaching from God's Word today, and, but also, uh, it's very important to us that we hear your heart today, and so go ahead and, and speak to us. Well, thank you again, Pastor, for that. Now, we had a wonderful time eating some delectable burgers at the pastor's house. I did not know he was such a grill master. Also some other delicious foods, and he's also a gardener that we found out, and so we're going to be tapping into his skillages. That's, that's an interesting word. <laughs> some of you guys are like, what's a skillage? Yeah, there you go. So uh, we're going to be picking up some of those, and we're excited about that. Well, I was born and raised in a Christian home. Actually, I'm Addison the Fourth. And Addison the first was a preacher, and he was back in Virginia. My dad, he works at the church. He does choir work there, as well as he's the administrator of the Christian school there. And so I grew up around the church, and I was put in the Christian school there. And I remember in, I was about to say fourth grade, but at four years old in pre-K, uh, we just gotten off of Easter vacation, and I was coming in, and our teacher, who's actually still teaching at the school there, she sat us all around in a little circle, and she said, okay, so, so what interesting thing happened over Easter vacation? And everyone was talking probably about, you know, their Easter candy and the quarters they found in their little eggs. But then there was this one girl, and she raised her hand, and she said that she got saved over Easter vacation. And I'm going to tell you how shallow I am. I was like, you know what, that girl's kind of cute, and uh, she got saved. And maybe if I raise my hand and say that I got saved, maybe there'll be a, a connection or something. And so I raised my hand right then, and she's like, anyone else get saved? And I was like, yes, I got saved. And uh, I was a liar and uh, did not get saved then. But in kindergarten, we were sitting around, and our teacher began to tell us the gospel. So it was a year later, and I remember thinking to myself, I, I'm not saved. I need this gospel. I need to know that I'm forgiven of my sins. By that time, I already knew that I was a sinner. I could tell you stories of how I knew I was a, I'll tell you one story of how I knew I was a sinner. When I was little, so I'm half white, half black. So my mom is the white one, and that comes into play in the story. We were in the mall, and we were walking around, and I wanted my way. I wanted to go to the train store, and that's what we called it. It was a place where they had like a little Thomas the Train set. You can go and play, and I wasn't getting my way. And so I began to throw a fit, and I would throw myself on the ground like a great Baptist child. And she was dragging me out of the mall. And as she was dragging me out of the mall, I began screaming, This woman's not my mother. This woman's not my... Yeah. <laughs> and as you can see, my sons are lighter than I am. So I have a feeling I might be repaid by this one day. <laughs> you might see me in jail. And... Uh... 
Oh, man. But yeah, I was a sinner. Still am. But I, I remember in kindergarten realizing my need, that I was a sinner and I needed the gospel. And I remember I went forward that day and I accepted Jesus as my Savior. I knew he was the only one. And as a five-year-old, you can still understand the simple message of the gospel, which is amazing. And so as time went on, though, you know, right after getting saved, I was on fire. I was telling everybody about Jesus. I remember our neighbor, Kevin, he was standing like this, and I was, my brother was there, and I said, hey, Jonah, don't you know what that looks like? And we're like, yeah, it looks like the cross. And Kevin was like, the cross? What are you talking about? And so right there, we led Kevin to the Lord, and he got saved. And then the next day, or not next day, but later on, we were under the play structure at our church, and a kid came over the fence to play on the playground, and his name was Isaac. And so I was like, hey, Isaac, do you know that's a, that's a Bible name? He's like, What's, what are you talking about? I'm like, you don't know about the Bible? So we talked about the Bible, and Isaac got saved. And this was when I was really young. But I'm telling you this because I was on fire, but things changed. I was little, I was on fire, but then I began to have a lot of doubts, as many young people do. And I began to think, I don't know if this is true. I don't know if I'm saved. And so every night I would pray the sinner's prayer over and over again, just hoping it would stick, not really knowing what was going on. And as I got through, you know, middle school years and I got into high school, I was put into an English class where we had to study the, uh, the myths, you know, the old Greek mythology. We had to read uh, Oedipus and we had to read uh, the Odyssey and those different things. And as I was reading these, I began to think, man, these look very similar to the Bible. And how come I believe one but not the other? And I came to that crisis of belief to where I really just threw away both. And I, I say I went from a good old Christian kid to an agnostic, and I really just didn't know, and I kind of hid it from everybody else. I didn't want anybody to know, especially with my dad being in the church. And so I went through a couple of years of just floating by, just playing the game. And uh, as I got into my junior year, though, I realized there has to be a God. There's just too much evidence for a God. And so I went from Christian to agnostic to a theist. I knew there was a God, but I, I didn't really like Jesus very much, and I don't know why. I, didn't, I, I thought he was a, char, a charlatan. I thought that he was trying to pull the wool over our eyes, that he was trying to steal God's glory. And as the time went on, I realized through an apologetic class and other people who sincerely loved Jesus, and that's what I always encourage people who, who know an agnostic, it's not just the good arguments. There's two things. They need the good arguments, but they need to see an authentic Christian. They need to see somebody who loves Jesus. And it was those two things side by side, and I couldn't explain it. I didn't get it. I'm like, how, how do you love Jesus? Like, you never met him. You don't know. How, how do you, like, love this guy? And I remember through the arguments of apologetics and through meeting these people that I realized Jesus, he is everything he said he was. And if you have doubts, I understand that. I've been there, done that. But I want to tell you that it's true. Jesus truly does change lives, and he truly did raise from the dead. And so I went through that time. I, I missed this part of my testimony. I was called to preach in fifth grade. <laughs> and so I, I kind of walked away from that calling while I was in high school, but came back into my junior year, began to just be on fire to see what God would do, and uh, went off to Bible college at West Coast, met my lovely wife, who you heard this morning. I stalked. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, no, but... I was so thankful that God would give me such a, an amazing woman. She truly is such a big help to me, and I can't wait to see what God's going to do with us in Grant's Pass. So we're going to sing a song that I believe, and Pastor, he really was like, this is the song I really want you to sing, because were it not for grace, where, where would we be? Where would I be? Uh, probably still not believing, were it not for the grace of God. And so we're going to sing uh, the song, Were It Not For Grace, and I hope it will be a blessing to you. measured out my days life carried me along in my soul I yearned to follow God but knew I'd never be so strong I looked hard at this world to learn how heaven could be gained just to end where I began where human effort is all in vain were it not for grace 
I can tell you where I'd be Wandering down some pointless road to nowhere With my salvation up to me And I know how that would go The battles I would face Forever running But losing the race Were it not for grace So here is all my praise expressed with all my heart offered to the friend who took my place and ran a course I could not even start but when he saw in full just how much his love would cost he still ran the final mile between me and heaven so i would not be lost were it not for grace i could tell you Wandering down some pointless road to nowhere With my salvation up to me And I know how that would go The battles I would face Forever running but losing the race tell you where I'd be wandering down some pointless road to nowhere with my salvation up to me and I know how that would go the battles I would face for but losing the race were it not for grace forever running but losing the race were it not for grace I believe at this time we have a little video presentation talking about our uh, heart for Grant's Pass, and I hope it's a blessing to you. The Pacific Northwest, a region known for its natural beauty, its rigid mountains, deep forests, and beautiful coastline. But for all of its natural beauty, much of the Pacific Northwest's lies in spiritual darkness. There are over 14 million people who live in the Pacific Northwest, and 62.8% of them do not participate in church, synagogue, mosque, or temple. 
Of the 37.2% that do, Baptists come in fifth, behind Catholics, Pentecostals, Latter-day Saints, and much more. The Pacific Northwest has fewer people attached to religious organizations than anywhere else in the nation. But the beauty of this is the possibilities are wide open. The possibilities of finding something better, of finding true life, of finding hope in Christ. There is a city in the Pacific Northwest known as Grants Pass, and it is our goal to take the gospel to this region. It is our goal to see lives transformed and lives changed. My name is Lloyd Reed, and I'm the pastor at Harvest Baptist Temple in Medford, Oregon. I want to take a moment and introduce to you Addison and Kendra Smith and their three boys, Addison, Hudson, and Trayson. It has been my honor and my privilege to serve alongside Addison for these last several years at Harvest. Addison has served as our associate pastor as well as our youth pastor and has shown tremendous evidence of the hand of God being on his life. It is my honor to tell you today that the Lord has called Addison and Kendra and their family to be sent out of Harvest Baptist in Medford to plant the Grants Pass Baptist Church in Grants Pass, Oregon. Would you prayerfully consider taking them on for support? The Lord is going to use them to get the gospel into Grants Pass and to reach the people of Grants Pass. He has a tremendous burden for that area, and he would be a tremendous addition to your missions and church planting family. Hi, I'm Addison Smith, and God has called my family to the beautiful area of Grants Pass, Oregon. Now, it was a little over a year ago that our pastor, he had sent us out to go and have a refreshing time. We went and took our two young kids at the time up to Wildlife Safari. And on the way back, we stopped in Grants Pass at Riverside Park. And as we were sitting there, I just remember God just started laying this burden on my heart for the people. I saw them with their kids and all around the city and the homeless population that was there. And I just remember this burden that began to develop in my heart. And as we were driving away, I remember looking at my wife and saying, Hey, I think, I think God might have us plant a church here. And later she told me that she thought I was kind of like, okay, it's kind of like a, kind of like a passing thing. It's not going to really last. And I asked her on that day if she would begin praying about it. And she did. And I began praying about it. And after about two weeks, we went to our pastor and I said, Pastor Lloyd, I, I just want to tell you that I'm, I don't know what it is, but I'm burdened for a city, um, Grants Pass. And I wanted to let you know, and I'll never forget this as long as I live. I remember as he reached into his desk and he pulled out some notes that he had and he opened it up to a specific place and he said you're not going to believe this but i want to show you something and he pointed in his notes to something that he was calling vision southern oregon and under vision southern oregon which is his vision to see three independent baptist churches started by the year 2025 which is an astounding vision i i am so excited for it but under that vision the first city that was there was Grants Pass. We hadn't talked about it, we hadn't communicated about this, yet separately God began burdening both of our hearts for the same city. And I told him, I'm not sure yet, I don't know if this is exactly where God wants us to go, but I'm gonna continue praying about it and I want you to pray with us about it. He said, I'll pray with you about it. And it wasn't much longer that I was back in his office telling him, yeah, that's where God wants us to be. God wants us in Grants Pass. And so, friend, if you want to, if you would be able to, I pray that you would join with us in this endeavor and that we see an independent Baptist church planted in Grants Pass, Oregon, that we would see lives transformed by the gospel. I believe that the gospel still changes lives. And if you're in church today and you're saved, you know the power of the gospel. You know what the gospel can do in lives all around the world. And I promise you the same gospel that changed your life can change the hearts and the lives of those in Grants Pass, Oregon. And so I pray that you'll partner with us. How, you might ask? Well, there's three major ways. The first one is maybe God calls you to come and join us as part of our team. Maybe you come and you help plant this church with us. The second thing is you can give financially. 
you can, through your church, give financially and help support us every month so that we can see this independent Baptist church established. And number three, and most importantly, is you can pray. I ask that you would join us in prayer daily. Take a prayer card, put it somewhere you'll see it, and hold us up in prayer. This area of the Pacific Northwest is very, very anti-church. It's churchless. But that doesn't mean it has to stay that way. And through the prayers of God's people and the preaching of God's word, I know God can do some amazing things in Grants Pass, Oregon. So we are excited. We recently moved to Grants Pass just not too long ago, and we're excited getting to know the, the place and the people and just the culture there. And I don't know how this is possible, but it's amazing how God can just make some place home already. And you just move there, and you're like, I, just, I, lo- I know this is exactly where God wants us to be. And so we don't know how everything's going to work out. But we are excited, and we just can't wait to see how God works, because we know He does. And so we're just along for the ride. At this time, we're going to open it up for some questions. This is the scariest part of the night. Take it easy on me. But if you got some questions, feel free to fire them away. Anybody with any questions? All right, that was easy. Oh, we got, we got a question, yes? Just wondering, what's your plan to get started down there and uh, you know, get things going for your church? Yeah, for sure. So the first thing we're going to try to do is we got to find a location over there that we're willing to rent, that's willing to rent to us, especially during these COVID days. Rentals are going to be difficult to come by because of all the people being afraid for their own legal sake. And, but we are in contact with a building right now. They actually just texted me back today saying, hey, we'll, we'll get some more information to you this week, see if that's something that we can do. So we are looking at a building. The next thing we got to do is start hitting the ground which is interesting in these days, maybe doing some leaving sanitized things on people's doorsteps or something, uh, but also a lot of social media out, outlets, we're gonna be using those as well. Um, the goal is September 13th to have our launch day, rain or shine, maybe it will be virtual, who knows what we're doing, uh, but then our grand opening will be in April, and so that is the plan, but uh, hopefully that answers the question. Any other questions? Yes. How big is the town? How big is the town? Good question. So Grants Pass is kind of interesting in that it's kind of like a sandwich of a bunch of different towns. But Grants Pass itself is about 36,000. But the actual area of all the cities right there is about 80-something thousand. And so that's just one little location. If you look at Grants Pass on the map, you'll see Rogue River's attached on the south and Merlin's on the north. And you've got a bunch of cities coming off towards the west. So that's about the size there. Anyone else? Yes. Are you aware of any other independent Baptist churches in the area? Yes, I am. There is one other independent Baptist church in the area, and they, we've, our pastors communicated with him, and they're excited to partner with us and be more of a teammate than a competition. And so we're excited to see what God does through two churches in that city. So, yes, sir. Anybody else with a question? Yes. Is there a, are you in the area of what they call a, I, I might get this wrong, but it's called the a di, Emerald Diamond area, or diamond, what they call in that area. The, I don't know. I'm not okay. sure. You're not, are you heading out right away after church? Um, we will be going to dinner with somebody, but we have okay. time to talk with so you if you would like that. To talk to them yeah, for time. sure. Good question. Anybody else? Sorry, I couldn't give a better answer. <laughs> uh, since we support um, other church planters, such as David Azarillo, uh, we know that any time you are starting a church, you have something called startup costs, and that is a, usually a big balloon that's at the beginning to get a church off the ground. Um, uh, do you know what those costs would be at this point? Now, we aren't quite sure of all the hard costs of printing and because we'd have to actually get our printing designed and understand kind of the scale we're wanting to go. 
but at this time, it's so difficult to understand if we're going to go the canvassing route, if that's going to be well, well received, or if it's going to actually give us a, a bad taste in people's mouths that's knocking on people's doors and handing them something. So we're not sure about that, which makes it difficult to calculate specific startup costs. But when it comes to chairs and when it comes to, you know, electronics for like if we're going to do a projector in there or if we're going to do anything else, it's going to be a couple thousand at least. That's at the smallest, but I think a lot of people plan for about 10,000 for the initial startup um, costs. So, yes, sir. Yes. Do you have a time set up to get going? So hopefully September 13th. That is our goal is September. So that's, is that like two months away? We're getting close. And so hopefully we'll begin doing some prayer meetings with, we have a few families who want to come and be a blessing. They're still living in Medford, but they want to come out and be a blessing as we're getting started. And so hopefully we'll start prayer meetings soon, and then we'll start some Bible studies in our homes and then have our launch day on September 13th. Just Lord willing, everything is up to him. So we'll see how it goes. Anybody else? Yes. So I don't know if you mentioned it yet. Are you, where are you at on your support level so far? You know, support level, we're probably around 15 to 20% because we just got started last. We started hard, like a real deputation in January, and we had a few meetings before then. And then we had good old COVID come in and disrupt our most busy month. <laughs> we had our, our, was it March, where we really got shut down? March was our busiest month, and we went to our first meeting of that month up in Washington, and we got the signal that we had to come back home and we couldn't continue with the meeting. And so that was fun. But the thing that we know is that God's in control, and when he sent us home, that was why we were actually able to buy a house in Grants Pass. Everything just worked out perfectly, and so we didn't really understand why God was doing what he was doing, but he's, his way is always perfect. And so finances, uh, we know who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, so we're not stressed out about it. But uh, I think we're probably around 15 to 20% to right now. So anybody else? Anybody else? Yes. What's it like down at Grants Pass? Like, is it kind of, kind of like the quiet town type thing, or is it big city? I mean, what's it like? Yeah, so, you know, I've learned that that is relative, um, because to my wife, Medford was a tiny town, because she was from the Bay Area of California, you know, where it's just big city. And so she came to she came to Medford. She's like, what is going on here? <laughs> and so I've learned that this is relative, because then I know that Brother Umber. The church he pastors in, is, or the city he pastors in, is what is 100 something? 135, 135 people, not 135,000. And so when we say we're going to a big city, to some people it's like, yeah, that's massive. Some people are like, where are you going again? <laughs> and so it is relative, like the feel. If, if you're from a smaller town, it's going to feel bigger. If you're from a big town, it's going to feel like mom and pop shop. Um, I would say for me, it feels average. <laughs> It just feels like right in that middle area. You know, we're not like, have you been to some bigger cities like Portland or, to, yeah, it's n nothing, absolutely nothing like that. It would be closer to this than to Portland, uh, but nothing like a tiny, tiny little town with one stoplight. So I think this would be a good comparison. If you've been to Grants Pass, am I making an accurate claim? Okay, and uh, that's probably about what we are here. That's how it feels. So, and it's a very you know, agricultural, they enjoy being outdoors, and so that would be fun. Anybody else? Hopefully I answered that question well. I apologize if it was like, what is he saying up there? But thanks for the grace. Anybody else with a question? Anybody else? Is there any other questions? The nice thing is my wife hasn't been correcting me very much at this time. When I first did a Q&A up in northern Washington, I saw her on the side. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I got to take notes. <laughs> so uh, hopefully I've learned the answers. We, she coached me in the car, and well, I think I was prepared. So <laughs> I'm kidding. But anybody else with a question? These have been great. Anybody else with a question? Anything else? Yes.
do you have any of the furnishings yet that you're going to put into the building for your startup stuff? So, God has provided, somebody sent us a communion set, which was incredible, was an incredible gift to us. And then, actually, our police department in Medford, uh, we have close ties to the police department there, and they donated a bunch of chairs. And so, we're, we're thankful for that. So, we have chairs, um, I think. I got to talk to Pastor Lloyd about that. Maybe he's got other use for them. But <laughs> he said that we have chairs. And so we got some chairs. We got offering plates. Besides that, we're not too sure about whatever else is going in there. Whatever else we need. We don't have a pulpit yet. Um, offering plates. Those things we don't quite have yet. Um, but just seeing God provide just gives me, you know, even, I just can't wait. It's, it's kind of like a mystery movie when you're watching and you're waiting for that thing just to come to pass. We just get to be along for that ride and see unexpected ways that God brings these things together. Like, who would have thought a police department would donate <laughs> chairs or a random family donated a desk for my office? And that was a huge, it's a huge blessing, solid wood, and uh, got it for free. So praise the Lord for those things that God just provides. Anybody else with a question? Anybody else? Anything else? Anything about my personal life that you want to know? I'm kidding. <laughs> Anything else? Other questions? Yes. So it's not similar to Portland. She asked what was the weather like. And a lot of people, when they come to our area, they're like, oh, it must be all really rainy there. And it's not much like Portland, where it's a lot of overcast there. Um, we get all four seasons, which we're thankful for. We do get a little bit of snow. We... Uh, get very hot summers where it gets into the hundreds and we get a beautiful spring and fall but it's it's not like Portland where it's overcast a lot of time or even worse like Seattle it's not like those um, I don't know I, I don't know what the weather is like here it, do you guys get all four seasons pretty good so it's probably very similar to this very similar yeah dry dry <laughs> oh good Anybody else with a question? Great questions. I'm enjoying these. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes. I'm kind of curious about the rest of the story with your mom when you were throwing the fit in the mall. <laughs> Can you finish that story? Well, needless to say, I was corrected. <laughs> she was not thrown in jail. I mean, this was back before all this craziness going on uh, but she took me out and I got I got corrected and uh, haven't tried to pull that stunt yet again so <laughs> there are other stories that I've been a knucklehead but that that one she, uh, she I don't know if we're allowed to say that live she spanked out of me so uh, <laughs> that was gone all right anybody else with a question anybody else yes What's the major industry of the town of Grants Pass? For sure. So the major industry used to be logging, and that was its bread and butter was logging. Uh, but with all the different laws that got passed, logging really slowed down in Grants Pass, but it still is there. Uh, but it's going to be more like a uh, just stores, you know, normal kinds of store. I, I don't know the proper terminology for storages, stores. Anybody can help, anybody help me out with that? Mercantile, mer Retail, yeah, that's the word, it's super big, <laughs> retail, okay, so retail and other things like that, and, uh, but it's, and there's a little bit of tourism that comes through just because of the climate there, and the river that comes right through there, um, but it's just, it used to be logging, no longer is, just more the mom and pop stores and the, the retailers that come through, so, yeah, that's all I, that's all I've seen so far, as the, as the, uh, I can't even remember the word for that either. What was the question that you asked me? I apologize. Industry. industry, yeah, that's the industries there. I apologize for my brain not working as well as it should. Yes. This isn't that important. Is that the Umqua that runs down through there? No, yeah. it's actually the Rogue River. Rogue. Okay. So it runs right through there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anybody else with a question? These have been fantastic. Anybody else? Anybody else? Going once, going twice. 
All right, well, it's about 7 o'clock, Pastor. Is this about the time you guys wrap up, or do you guys want a, a short? <laughs> okay, well, I, I'm going to do a short little Bible study, okay? It's not going to be rip-roar or anything, uh, but we're going to turn in our Bibles to Proverbs. This is just something that God was working in my heart with in these last few days. I hope it's a blessing to you as well. We're going to be in Proverbs chapter number 3. Just something simple. I pray it's an encouragement to you. Proverbs chapter number 3. Proverbs chapter 3. And we're going to read probably some of your life verses. Um, it's, a, it's a tremendous passage, a very encouraging passage. We're going to read verses 5 and 6. And the Bible says this. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. As you can tell, this is, this is an encouragement for us as we're coming into a place where we don't really know how God's going to do everything and how things are going to be taken care of, but we do know that he is going to be the provider. But I also know that everybody is on their own path, and every single person here has to trust the Lord with all their hearts and lean not unto their own understanding in these crazy uncertain times. I know that it is, uh, some people are fearful. I know that we shouldn't be. But I know there are some people who are nervous about the future, about what's going to happen in our country and these different things. But I do know this, is we can trust the Lord with all our heart and we shouldn't lean into our own understanding. And I have three different areas that I believe we need to trust the Lord. And again, this is a Bible study. The first one is this. We need to trust the Lord with our past. Trust the Lord with our past. You see, I'm, I'm amazed that such a holy God could be such a merciful and gracious God. And I love how in 1 John he says this, confess your sins, and if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so I don't know what's been in your past, but can I, can I encourage us all to trust the Lord with our past. There was this airplane uh, a man who was learning to become a pilot, and as he was learning to become a pilot, he was flying through this plane, and his instructor was next to him, and his instructor told him to go up, up, up as straight as he could until the engine stalled. And as he was going up and the engine stalled, fear began to take over this trainee, and he began to look over at the instructor to see if he would help him, but the instructor just looked at him and said, oh, good luck. And this man was now in this life or death kind of crisis, thinking, I've got to be able to pull this out. And so the man, his mind came back to him, and he began to pull his way back out. And he got the plane started again, and they survived. And he looked over at this man, and he said, how, why would you do that? Don't you know we could have died? How, how dare you do something like that? This is our life we're talking about here. And the instructor looked at him and said, friend, there is nothing you can get this plane into that I can't get us out of. And if you want to learn to fly the plane, get up there and let's do it again. And as I read that story, I realized that there was nothing that we could have gotten ourselves into that God couldn't get us out of. And so as we look at our lives, some people think, it's too bad. I've, I've messed up my life too far gone. There's no way God can recover. There's no way God can use me. But as we read the Bible, we realize that's not true. Do we want to go down those paths? No. But if you've gone down those paths, the amazing thing is like Rahab, God can still take you and use you use you in a mighty way. So we got to trust the Lord with our past. The second thing we need to do is trust the Lord with our present. <laughs> yeah, trust the Lord with our present. Yes, it's amazing to accept the forgiveness, but how do we demonstrate our trust in the Lord in this moment, right now? And the way we demonstrate our trust is obedience. And we live in a day when Christianity is almost do whatever you feel like and God's okay with it, but that's not faith. Faith always obeys even when it seems silly, even when it seems uncertain, and we don't see all the facts. If you look back at Jericho and the, the, the instructions they were given to walk around the city, that's not a good battle plan. <laughs> but they had to walk by faith. And sometimes God asks us to do things that we don't understand. We don't know why he's asking. I don't know what's in your life that God's saying, hey, I need you to do this. And you're thinking, God, I, I, don't you understand? I don't have the resources to do that. Hey, don't you understand? I don't have the personality to do that. If you don't know me, I'm an introvert by nature. I enjoy, my wife will tell you this, reading a book and not talking to people. I enjoy recharging somewhere quiet. And then God asks us to be a preacher. You think, are you serious? But here's the thing, we've got to trust the Lord and obey him. And I don't know what your personality is 
And maybe God's asking you to do something that you think is contrary to your personality. Trust in the Lord with your present and obey what he asks you to do. I don't know if it's about money. And you think, man, I'm poor. I can't give, but I've heard this church is generous, so I don't think we have much of a problem there. But maybe you're thinking, I can't be involved in the giving. Friends, we've got to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. And if he asks us to provide for something, like I heard someone needed groceries in Alaska, and this church trusted the Lord. I don't know what your financial situation was, but I do understand that most people don't have extra, you know, thousands of dollars laying around, yet you guys trusted the Lord with all your heart and said, God, if you want me to give, I'm going to give and I'm going to do this. And because of that, a man was taken care of. But I don't know what your situation is where God's asking you, trust me. But can I just encourage all of us as believers, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding the way you see things. And the last thing we need to do is trust in the Lord with our future. Trust in the Lord with our future. We live in days where it'd be easy for us to worry. And I, I, I bet if I asked for a show of hands, there are some of us who have worried. But we probably wouldn't want to admit it. But we've thought, are we losing our America? Are we losing everything that we used to know? You've probably heard the statement, the new normal. And I don't like that statement very much. But uh, we think, is this, is, is this how it's going to be for our kids? Is this how it's going to be going forward? But friends, we've got to trust the Lord with our future. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as he will. He can turn it as the rivers of water. And so, friends, we've got to trust the Lord with our future. There was a, a story of a man, another one, who was going on his first airplane ride. And as he was going on his first airplane ride, uh, he came off and his friends were eager to hear how it went. And he looked at them and he said, it wasn't as bad as I thought it might be. But I'll tell you this, I never did put all my weight down. And it seems so silly. I mean, why? you're in an airplane. You can't keep any of your weight up. We think that's, that guy's a fool. But sometimes we do the same thing with our lives. We never fully rest in God's word. We never fully rest in God's plan. And we think, maybe if I hold this, if I do this, it will turn out better. But God says this, can you by thinking add one cubit to your height? Can you think yourself taller? He says, can you think any more hair on top of your head? Can you think any of these things? You can't by thinking do this. And so he encourages us, don't worry. Don't take any thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And so, friends, I don't know what the future holds. <laughs> and I promise you, none of us in this room know what the future holds. But here's the encouraging thing. We know who holds the future. And so we need to trust him with all of our hearts and lean not on our own understanding. In all of our ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. Just a simple study that God has been putting on my heart. That we just trust the Lord. No high energy, no jumping around, no running. But I do believe that God's word is powerful enough that it doesn't need me jumping around. And that even if it's so simple, we can take this simple truth, as I need simple truths, and we can hold it in our hearts. And as we go to bed tonight, we can think, God, I'm trusting you. And as we wake up tomorrow, we can think, God, I want to trust you today. God, every step. Let me do exactly what you would want. Let me talk to who you'd want me to talk to. Lord, use my life as only you can use it. Well, it's been a blessing and a pleasure being here. Let's pray real quickly, and I'll turn it over to Pastor. Dear Father, Lord, I'm so thankful for you. God, I'm thankful that you can take any one of us. God, you delight in using the weakest of us. And God, I pray that as we get into these crazy days, we would realize we don't have to be fearful, but we can trust you. Or we can trust you with everything we are. And Lord, I don't know if there's someone in here who hasn't trusted you with their past yet. Lord, I pray they would trust you today to forgive them of their sins. And Lord, I don't know if there's someone here who knows they're supposed to be doing something, but they're not doing it. Lord, I pray they would trust you with their present. And Lord, I don't know if there's someone here who's worried about the future. But Lord, I pray they would trust you with it. And they would find that constant peace and that rest that's only found in you. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Pastor. Let us stand together and find in your songbooks number 163. The song is only Trust Him, and this is the message of tonight. The only way that Brother Smith and his wife and his family can go and do what they're doing. It's a simple word. It's called trust. And the only way that you can move forward for Jesus Christ, 
the only way that you can move in a right way. The word is trust. So let us think about this as we sing this song. If you have decisions that need to be made tonight, please make them as we sing this song, 163. Come every soul by sin oppressed, there's mercy with our Lord, and He will surely give you rest by trusting. Say. 